Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the September 22nd meeting of the Weather Surveilled Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us the opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations or table it for cons further consideration. In rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting but not, need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inland wetlands, or building. Please contact the department to review any other permits that may be required before you begin your construction. With this, I ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you. Legal notice, Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission. Wethersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the following application seeking certificates of appropriateness. Application 5051-20, Thomas and Marjorie Carson, seeking to remove one car garage and replace with a 12 by 24 Clotter Farms garage with a T111 Durotemp siding at 12 Avalon Place. Application 5052-20, William and Nicole Liska, seeking to replace right front picture window with Harvey Vinyl SDL picture window, also installed two vinyl lamp posts at 21 Chesterfield Road. Application 5053-20, Zendenko and Zahara Stoljevic, seeking to install six foot high wood fence along rear property line and four foot high wood fence along rear side property lines with six foot high gates at 40 Hart Street. Application 5054, Brian and Evie Moretti, seeking to remove one car garage and replace with the 10 by 16 Carter Farms Victorian Cottage Shed with T111 Duratemp siding at 28 Belmont Street. Application 5055-20, Renewal by Anderson, seeking to install 34 double hung Renewal by Anderson replacement fabrics windows at 37 State Street. Application 5056-20, Gove Restoration LLC, seeking to replace side garage entry door with six panel fiberglass door, replace garage front gable window with a Windsor new construction clad window, replace overhead garage door with a Wayne Dalton 8300 series door at 415 Main Street. Application 5057-20, DeMarco Management Corporation slash Paul Cody seeking to remove two car garage without replacement at 337 Hartford Ave. Julie Costello seeking to replace 13 windows with Harvey Majesty SDL clad windows in black color at 341 Main Street. Application 5059-20, Justin Malata seeking to install a six foot high wood fence in rear yard and six foot high gate across driveway at 20 Avalon Place. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format any residents interested in speaking or an application or wishing, wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Thank you. Thank oh, you very I didn't much. finish it. I got to scroll up. Donna Weathersfield. Historic Tristan Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Wethersfield, Connecticut, this fifth day of September, 2020. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. We're gonna jump right in for the record today. We've got uh, full members, uh, Chris Lyons, Mark Raymond, Doug Ovian, Claire Mead, and Jennifer Wolf 
our alternates, uh, Vasek Miglis. Oh, I forgot Claire Mead. Sorry. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Our alternates, Vasek Miglis and Kathleen Williams. And missing again today is Damian Craigow. Our first application, 5049, the application for 19 Willard Street. Do we have someone present for that? Oh, that's the one that's, that's off. That's withdrawn, yeah. That's withdrawn, folks. So we're going to take that off the list. Our second application, 5051, the application for 12 Avalon Place. Do we have someone for 12 Avalon Place, the Carsons? Are they maybe muted? If you're here, please check your... Um, He's waving. I see him waving. Can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. I can see you now, too. Okay, tell us about your application today. Uh, we have an existing garage that's 18 by 10. Uh, it's about 90 years old. It's leaning to one side and it's rotting at the bottom. And we, uh, we're seeking to uh, replace that with a 12 by 24 foot uh, Clotter Farms garage. It's gonna be in essentially the same location, but we have to shift it about a foot or so to the right. And uh, we're gonna push it back about four feet from where the existing uh, garage is now. Great, your application material, we're familiar with this product. The Dura temp on the outside is actually a wood product. Is that correct? Yes. And I assume the pictures show the um, side doors on the left side, but I assume they're going to be on the right side to access to your yard. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And you've circled um, the Stockbridge style window, which is the three square windows and then three square windows. Great. Uh, does anyone have any questions for this applicant? Hearing none? Nobody? Okay. Thank you, you for such a complete application. Do you have anything else you'd like to add for us? Nope. Okay. Anyone from the public wishing to comment in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next application. Thank you very much, folks. Our third on the list, William and Nicole Liska, application 5052 at 21 Chesterfield. Hello. Hi there. Can you identify yourself, your name and address for the record, please? Sure. William Liska, 21 Chesterfield Road in Wethersfield. And what do you have for us tonight? Okay, we're uh, applying for two things. One is um, permission to uh, replace the existing picture window in our living room. Um, this is on the right side of the house as you face it from the street. Um, and we're going to be replacing it with a uh, vinyl window. Um, the information uh, on that was submitted along with the application. Um, the other thing that we're doing is um, replacing two lamp posts. Um, our house is on a corner, uh, Chesterfield and Oldham Road. There's one lamp post on the sidewalk in the front yard and one next to the driveway uh, on the side yard. Uh, on Oldham. So we're looking to replace two uh, existing wooden posts with uh, two new vinyl ones uh, and information was submitted showing the, uh, uh, the two uh, proposed ones. Okay. Did everyone get a chance? We had the original application and then there was a subsequent email with I'm sorry? Mr. Liska, if I can ask you, um, it, the windows in the balance of the house, what are those windows right now? Um, those are vinyl windows, which we replaced back in 2008. Um, and uh, they're, like I say, vinyl windows. Were they a clad product? Um, pardon? Do you know if they were a clad product, so there's a wood interior to those windows? Uh, no, they're not, there's no wood that I'm aware of. They're, um, they're, they're basically vinyl windows. 
They were approved, you know, through the, the through the commission. Jennifer, it's Kim. I just want to interrupt for one second. The contractor Mike is on, so maybe he could add to this a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I really don't know what the balance of the rest of the house is. Um, I only had a chance to take a look at um, just one or two of them because we were trying to take a look at um, whether they were simulated divided light or full divided light. Um, so that's why we went with uh, we were going with a simulated uh, divided light there uh, to match what was next to the house or I'm sorry next to the uh, that window. Jennifer, should we get Mike to identify himself and where he is? So. Oh yeah, Mike Tulanek uh, from Upstream Renovations. Thank you. Mike, is this a vinyl product? Is this the Slimline product or what Harvey? I know we got the brochure in the email today. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, the Harvey, um, the classic series, I believe. Yeah, that's what the brochure says. I didn't know. Actually, it says accessory windows. Well, I mean, so I, I added um, that PDF to show the accessories to that window um, that, that um, just to give a little bit more detail and some more pictures of what was actually being installed. And then the, are you also doing the lampposts or is the homeowner doing them? Himself? I don't know if I'm looking to do the lampposts as well. Okay. And so the lampposts are a hollow vinyl product that you have to place over a four by four, is that correct? Correct. And were other products looked at for that? Like a composite? I know that um, on the side porch uh, facing Oldham on that house, there's a column that looks like maybe it's a composite that replicates wood better than a, a vinyl product might. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I could look into that. Um, this this was just the one that was presented um, from the homeowner that that they kind of fell in love with when they saw the pictures. Um, but that's something um, I could look into. Yeah, this is Illiska again. There's a house that's diagonally across from us on Oldham. Um, that's Mike Fitzsimmons' house, and he has exactly what we're looking to put in. Uh, he's had that there for quite some time. That's actually where we got the idea. I'm not sure which property you were referring to that had a, a different product. On the porch. Mm -hmm. On the porch, the post on the porch. Oh, ours? Yeah, that's, that's vinyl, I think. Do any of the commissioners have questions for these applicants? I, I'm just wondering if they could describe uh, if the house is behind them on their side of Oldham or across the street. The, the one that I'm talking about, um, it's, it's across Oldham. So if you were standing on our side yard with your back to the house, it would be to your right across the street, across Oldham. Is it the first house that faces Oldham? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, the other question I had is that uh, I would imagine there might be some record on file as to what window was approved there previously. Um, if that's something that's asked of the coordinator and enough time is given, she might be able to identify that for you so that you could have uh, an exact match. I realize that this is an accessory window in the sense that it's a picture window, but uh, it may be that that's a resource that should be uh, evaluated. Thanks. I'm not sure um, if that company is still in business or not that did that. That built the window or that installed it? The, the windows were installed by our, um, we had a contractor at the time, we put an addition on at the same time we did siding right. and the windows, so that's. It's, it was a great project and uh, has stood the test of time. And so that was why I was just curious about the window. Doug, I'm looking into it really quickly. Thank you. Sure. That's something we can always discuss at the public meeting. In the meantime, thank you very much, folks, for letting us know what you're interested in there. It's a great any, corner house. Any other commissioners have any comments or questions? 
Is this lamppost all one piece? It looks to be that it is, right? It actually isn't. Um, it, is it in sectionals? Yeah. The, the body slides over a piece of wood and then the, um, I, I looked it up online today and if it's the same one and I believe I had the right model, um, the what appears to be um, trim work moving your way up is actually then glued to it. And so I'm a little concerned about how long that's going to stand the, the joints. Time. Yeah. Um, and you know, the other problems that we have with the vinyl, with the shine off of it and its um, tendency to almost have a static cling effect to the things around it and end up having a lot of dirt stuck on it. That sort of thing with the shininess. Um, I think it's, you know, worth looking at, maybe some other products that would do a better job blending with the house because the house, you know, is lovely. And I often use it as an example of a good siding job for other people. Um, and then, you know, of course we will want to look into that prior window product too, I think. The only Jen, other thing I would add, Jen, is that um, if they uh, don't have a, a real time value issue, I'd certainly want to give full uh, consideration to this other uh, post that they seem to like so much that's right across the street. In my experience, over time, most posts, regardless of their composition, tend to deteriorate. Um, and I think you're right. There are certain things about this particular post that we'd have to be aware of. But because almost every post uh, is subject to some issue, um, I'd be willing to at least look at the other one uh, because I think if we're talking about a prop the property that I think we're talking about, I think it's been there for a while unless they've replaced it. Thank you. I'm sorry, uh, jump in here. When you look at their FAQs on today's uh, you know, email that followed up on the post, it says it can go over insulation guide, calls for pressure treated wood four by four to slide over. But it also then says down that it can, it does not have to uh, do it that way. It can be, uh, put, you know, it has its own uh, supports into the ground. So it doesn't have to go over posts. It could do either. It says our four by four easy mount lamp post comes with our easy mount system, which allows for easy insulation, can be hammered into the ground to take the place of any pressure treated wood um, as well. So you can do it either way, it looks like. Okay. And it's saying it's a two piece. Uh, so right, what you're talking about, Jen, from the lamp down where the first molding is, that looks like that's one piece and then it's a solid uh, piece after that. Right. Okay, anyone else have any questions or comments? Hearing none, any, anyone speak in favor against from the public? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next application. Thank you folks for coming in. Application 5053, 40 Hart Street. Hi, good evening. This is Igor. I just want to make sure you can hear me. Yes. Can okay. you uh, give your name and address for the record, please? Yes, my name is Igor Stojevic, and the address is 40 Hart Street. Great. And speaking on behalf of the applicants, Zdenko and Zura, who are also my parents, and they are here as well. Excellent. Tell us about your project today. So they are proposing to install a new wooden fence. Um, it's pretty much going to go up halfway to the property. So it's not going up to the street. It's going pretty much from the halfway down to the back of the property. It's going to be a four foot fence on the sides, which is where it faces the neighbors and a six foot fence in the back, which is a faces a wooden area. And then it has the heart seed, uh, warehouse in the back. So no, no neighbors in the back. <clears throat> and then a, then a gate on the left side of the property um, for access. Do, do you actually have two gates? Your um, application shows a gate on each side. Oh yes, there is another gate for uh, so they can mow the lawn on the other side of the property as well. And the pictures that came with it, the top two pictures show 
a picket with a pointy top and a stockade with a pointy top and then the transitions that are drawn in have a look like a different style fence are they actually all going to match are those drawings just for illustration or are there two different fences? yeah just for illustration i'm not the best artist but uh yeah. no, no that's great i appreciate the renderings Other commissioners have questions for these applicants? Oh, it look, looks like a good fence. Uh, I think it's, uh, it will work well with the pickets uh, facing most of the directions. Okay, do you have anything else for us, sir? I do not. Okay, do we have any members of the public wishing to comment in favor or against? Hi, this is Cheryl Jadini. I'm a neighbor of, of the applicant. Can you give the, your address for us, please? Absolutely. It's 46 Hart Street. Great. And I just had a couple of questions how they determined the property line. Yes, um, there, was, there was existing posts there, so we're proposing move two feet in from those posts. So will the fence go on the line that is is existing with a string or how, how will that work? So the string is the actual property line. It's going to go two feet in of that line. Okay. Yes. That's what we were curious about how that line was determined and it looks like you used a prior survey from the town hall as well. Correct. Okay. All right. That's that was our concern that it we weren't uh, opposed to the fence that it but prefer that it not be right on the property line between the two homes oh absolutely not yep, we'll leave two feet for uh for maintenance so we rely on the um information given to us between the homeowner and the plot plan that the town provides when they provide one but if you have any questions you can definitely speak to the building department about it as well the only other thing I should add is that we usually we ask the homeowners to put the good side facing out on your fence. Yes. Uh, yep. So your neighbors get to look at the good side. Absolutely. Great. Thank you very much for coming in, ma'am. Yep. Um, do we have anyone else from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next application. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Application 5054 at 28 Belmont. Hi, we're here. Brian and Evie Moretti, 28 Belmont Street. Hey, tell us about your project today. Well, we're looking to replace our existing original garage. It's 10 by 18, and we want to replace it with a barnyard Victorian cottage style 10 by 16 barn shed. So we did not get a plot plan with this application. Is it going more or less in the same spot? I know it's, it's a little going more. Small. It's going in the same spot, only um, two feet over to, um, to put the crushed stone and the padding down underneath about two feet. And when you mean two feet to the right or to the yeah. left? Okay. In, in towards the property. Okay. And again, this is that same um, wood product, the Duratemp yep. wood product. T111. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. It looks like a really cute um, building. You're, you're one of our two leaning small garages tonight. Yes, it's leaning <laughs> a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, does anyone have any questions for the applicant on this? Yes. Uh... Um, it's probably not going to help the applicant as far as the nomenclature goes, but there were two photographs or two, one photograph of one drawing submitted, uh, one on our page 52 and the other one on our page 53. Uh, the drawing shows a different door than the photograph does. I'm just curious which is really being proposed. Um, so I don't even know the drawing you're speaking of, but the door it would be the picture of the barn. Do you see it with the two double doors with the windows in the door? Yes. That's the door we're getting. Okay. Because the one, 
on the page above it, which actually has part of a price, I believe, written in it, has a different door. style door with a clustery window above it. Right. No. That's not what you're looking for. Nope. Nope. Okay. We're going to do the doors in the window. Great. I think that's a good choice. Yes. I like it better. <laughs> Anyone else? Hearing none, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? With that, we'll move on to the next application. Thank you folks for coming in. Thanks. Application 5055 37 State Street. Yes, Todd Francis here by with the by Anderson. Can you give your full name and business address for the record, please? Yeah, Todd Francis, Renewal by Anderson. Our address is 800 Corporate Row, Cromwell, Connecticut. Thank you. Tell us about your project tonight. So pretty basic. So I think it's 34 windows. Everything is going to be a replacement window. All the exterior trim is going to remain. So we are using our slope sill technology. So from the outside, it's really going to appear as if it's still a painted white window, all the storms will be removed. Uh, we use our L trim, which is basically just a piece of Fibrex, which is the same material, composite material our window is made of to tra transition from the uh, exterior trim to the new window. So it's really gonna look seamless as far as, as the outside is concerned. Could I ask if you have a, uh uh, photograph or drawing that uh, shows that to us? It sounds like a real attractive feature. So, I got a window right here. So this is the actual window that would go in. So this is really literally just a piece that's, that's used to, to cart it around. So this is a piece of Eltrim, it's, it's a different color but it's in the shape of an L. So once the window is in and we foam all around this exterior, there's gonna be a tiny small gap. This is the outside. So we just snap this on and it's gonna have, you know, it's gonna have the same, all the stuff as the mortise and tenon corners, just like the, the old school windows did. And this oh, is gonna yes. cover up everything between where the trim is and where the window starts. You, of course, meant mitered corners, right? Mitered, mortise and tenon. I mean, yeah, I think we're saying the All same the thing. Same you, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a vinyl 45 degree angle, you know, that you would see on something that... <clears throat> so I can show you, and I have, you know, if you wanted to see a picture I can share my screen real quick with something that's a historic job. Let's see. That would be great. Sure thing. Uh, share screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, so. Historic, historic. Oh, I had it open, maybe I didn't. Okay, so let's not get dizzy. Don't pay too much attention to my <laughs> screen yet. Uh, what I wanted to show, it's this one. So of course they have grills. Uh, in my customer's house, they don't have any grills, so we're replacing it just as is without the grills, but this is the after. And you, around the outside exterior border, you can see that I'll say one inch piece. That's the L trim and the, the window is, you know, pretty much just what I showed you. So it helps uh, disguise the fact that there's that this is an insert window? Correct, and then because it's our slope sill technology on the bottom, on the outside, just like this one, 
you're not really yes. you're, you're not going to notice anything as far as it looking any different from the outside as opposed to sometimes if the sill is is too flat i have to use something that that has uh, a little bit of an extra lip on the outside just because it's a flat sill and it just raises it up just slightly in this particular project we don't have to do that so on the outside it's it's really going to look as close to humanly possible as a historic window while still being a new composite window that looks like a painted wood window. So there won't be a, a floating rise above the sill, this slope sill kind of disguises that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. On the um, pictures that you submitted, two windows on the east side in the bump outs on the first and second floor are X'd out. Are you not replacing those windows? Correct. Those would be the windows with the decorative light division? Absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's some, which you can't see from the outside, but my, my client is a painter. So his plan, uh, once we get this approved, is he's going to take the storms off. He's going to paint the windows white because uh, underneath they're actually not white right now. Um, and then he's going to put an internal storm on the inside of his, his home. So those can be a little bit more energy efficient than they currently are. I have just a quick question. Uh, if, it is, if it's already called out, I'm sorry I missed it, but what color screens are you asking for? Uh, the screens will match the window. They'll all be white. Um, the reason why I asked is because the sample historic house picture that you uh, showed us was a great example of how uh, a really dark screen uh, doesn't always work as well with a white window uh, as opposed to maybe a, a lighter color screen since uh, I think the bottom sash looked like it was covered with pretty dark uh, nylon uh, or material for the screening. Uh, and that would have been in the, the house has two windows and it's maybe a reddish color. Correct. Yep. If you could just show us that for a second. Yeah. So I'm not sure what kind of screen that is. I mean, it does understand it. I dark. Just, can you show, get us back to that picture on the screen? Yeah. Share? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Let's see. Thank you very much. I see it over there now. The after picture is quite attractive, especially in the top sash. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, you're never going to have a perfect situation with a screen, but uh, sometimes there are uh, a silver color might be a little less imposing on the uh, dividers of the w sash behind it. So you can at least still see them. Do you have silver? Well, or, uh, when when yeah. you said white, so. uh, when you said white, I'm assuming you have a white frame, but would the screen itself be available in kind of a silver material as opposed to black silver so you're saying uh fiberglass full screen in your estimates yeah exactly so it's a very actually i might i realize we're talking about a one light window here um so that is a factor as well um i will offer that or concede that so that that is the fiber. This is a fiberglass screen that's over my sash right now. Sure. So this is a an invisible screen. Oh, that's uh, is this Anderson True Scene? That's the True Scene. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. an expensive option when you're talking about thirty-four windows. No, um, I understand. It really has more benefit on the inside outlook than the outside in. So I'm not necessarily married to it either, but just asking about the screen options and I appreciate uh, the fill-in. Yeah. 
Does anyone else have any questions for this applicant? I'd just like to say for the record, that's the best Anderson proposal install that, that I have heard of <laughs> compared to the previous. I, Thank I, you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Do we have anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 5056, the application for 415 Main Street. Hello. All right. Hi, guys. Um, this is Matt Gove from Gove Restoration, uh, 70 Main Street in Weatherstone here. Thanks, Matt. Tell us about your application. Yeah, so um, we're just seeking to replace the side entry door into the garage. Um, right now the, the current door is falling apart so she wants to put in a fiberglass door and she wants to do a six panel um just fiberglass door so um yeah i think i submitted the drawing for you guys and one, one window in addition to that yeah there is one window on the uh on the gable the front gable end of the uh, of the garage uh, no light pattern. We want to replace it with uh, a, a Windsor window, which we've done a lot of in the district. Um, same, you know, no light pattern, uh, but it's going to have insulated glass in it. Uh, and then it can be painted as well. So um, I know that the, uh, the homeowner is looking to paint that. So we'll be painting that as well to match the existing color that's there. And then lastly, we have the garage door and it's going to match the same exact style to that garage door, but we're going to switch from a a wood door to the to the steel door that I that I included in the in the application. I think we've got a pretty complete application. Um, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Gove tonight? No, nope, hearing none. Great. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Uh, anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, move on to application 5057-337 Hartford Avenue. Uh, hello, this is uh, Paul Cody. I'm with DeMarco Management of uh, Murphy Road in Hartford. Thank you. Can you tell us about this application? Uh, well, is the garage at the rear of the property at 337 is uh, well beyond usable. It's uh, rotting away. There's sections of the roof that have come in. Um, it's not really a structure that can be restored. Uh, the owners of the property would like to remove the garage and regrade the and seed the area so that we would demolish the garage with the proper permits and disposal and then uh, grade and seed the area at the back of the property to remove it. And so that's just not there anymore. Uh, the pictures in the application show you the, the uh, property, the garage is in beyond repair. Great, I drove by, I did not walk by. I could not catch a glimpse of it driving by, uh, including going around to the um, cul-de-sac on the back side of the property. I couldn't see it at all. Could anyone even see it? No, I walked it. No. no. <laughs> As you know, Jen, I live a couple doors down, and uh, from from my backyard, I couldn't see it. I had to actually walk into the backyard of the property to find it. So, yeah, very very little visibility to the street whatsoever. Um, Mr. Cody, please relay mm -hmm. to the applicants that we sincerely appreciate being and coming in for this application. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any comments in favor or opposed to this? Any members of the public? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next application 5058-341 Main Street. Hi, Julie Costello here. Uh, You're the can homeowner. you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. That's correct, yes. Okay, tell us. So I have submitted an application to I would like to remove and replace 13 of my windows here. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I can't open half of them. A lot of them have broken glass and they're just uh, to the point where I would like to put in something new. I'm proposing to put in Harvey Majesty windows. 
Uh, with the true view screens, we would do a simulated divided light. They would be clad windows with black on the exterior. Um, and again, the, the grids for the simulated divided light. I sent him pictures of my house with my application and showing the grid patterns for each window that I propose. Uh, the windows on the south side of the house, I would propose a 12 over 12 pattern. The windows for the front of the house, the same. Uh, the first window on the north side of the house, um, it is a 12 over 12. I would propose removing that and replacing that with a 12 over 12. Moving down, I have two bathroom windows. I'm proposing a nine over nine grad grid pattern. I have two kitchen windows, which are currently 12 over 12, and I would propose that same light pattern. And then moving down, I have two more kitchen windows, which I would propose a 12 over eight grid pattern. Uh, I know that's a mouthful, um, so please uh, fire away if you have questions. Thank you very much for the way you've presented it. It's actually very easy to follow. Thank you. I'll also uh, say that uh, I, this is not the first time that you've been before us to discuss windows. And no, I really, uh, appreciate, really appreciate that. Uh, the previous discussions that we've had have allowed you to uh, contemplate each window uh, before you came back to uh, even get to the issue of uh, the most important thing, which is the pattern. Uh, certainly, we talked about the fact that I think you wanted black windows previously. They are uh, pretty forgiving. Uh, and I do think that especially when you have a home that has multiple light patterns being appropriate, for them, uh, what's really nice is that the um, difference from window to window uh, really won't hit someone out on the street, uh, but you're doing a really nice job of trying to follow the heritage of each room uh, and uh, each uh, side of the house. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. So obviously with the age of your house, um, you know, we're concerned in its prime location on Main Street. Uh, we have, a, we always have a lot of concern over the product itself, um, along with the color. It, you're planning on doing the first floor windows first? Correct. I imagine you're planning on doing the entire house at some point? Yeah, I just, it's expensive. So it, it took me a couple of years to save up for this project. It'll probably be a couple of years before I can do the upstairs. I guess the plan I is though. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The commissioners feel about it, but I almost prefer to see a facade at a time if we're going to, um, it, you know, maybe approve the entire project. But looking at, at um, windows being done, you know, say the front side first or the sides for a, a side or one side or the other. Um, does anyone have any questions about the product itself? I can speak to the installation after that uh, because I do share your um, thought. As far as the um, as far as the deployment goes, uh, as a homeowner, I can understand that it would be easier to deal with renovation on one floor at a time, uh, one room at a time, and being able to kind of complete those areas. But it is true that with the sidewalk as close to the house as it is, uh, is there any way that you could add the three uh, upstairs windows, uh, and I think they are three, I have to take another look, yeah. uh, that are across the front to the initial part of the project uh, so that the whole front facade would be done. I think the other windows are already painted black. And I, I think to a certain extent, what's happening on the side may not be as obvious as what's happening in the front. Uh, so maybe that could be a potential point of compromise. Uh, I would tend to favor uh, sides of the house at a time. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you were about to do a whole floor, if we're only talking a few more windows above it to give us that front facade, that would be a really great thing, I think. So you would propose me um, doing the upstairs windows that face the street as well? In that first phase, that would be great if you could consider it only because I really do think that okay. 
uh, and I think that part of what the um, other commissioners are saying or, or the chairperson is saying uh, is that she would prefer to see uh, a whole facade done. Uh, I certainly uh, would be willing to give up some of the first floor windows in exchange for those if you have to trade three out. Uh, but I do, I do agree that it would be great to start this project with the front and uh, to make sure that all the front gets done at the same time. Yeah, I have no issue with that. I, I have a very good window person who'd be happy to measure those. Uh, I had actually hoped to restore the upstairs windows, um, but um, I could certainly just swap them out at this point in time for the replacements if that's what the commission's proposing. So, Ms. Costello, I think what part of what's driving this conversation is too often we have been faced with an applicant coming in and having a project that wasn't quite finished like yours would be several years right. on the road and being told that, well, the product has changed over the years. The original one is no longer available. It looks a little bit different. And I think especially in the light of a very a front facade that's very visible from the street, uh, it would look awkward if that happened. And okay. we would hate to be in that position and we'd hate to put you in that position. I could easily add three windows. That's not a problem. Okay. I would propose doing the Harvey Majesty and I would keep the same light patterns that the windows have now. Okay. Yep. Thank you. That would be fantastic. If you were thinking of restoring the top windows, are the bottom first floor windows beyond restoration? That's my thought. The two as well, in the kitchen then. are yeah the two in the kitchen are pretty bad um the one on the north side of the house um the 12 over 12 could be restored it doesn't have as many broken panes and i, I think it, it probably could be restored but the ones in the uh, and the the six over sixes um i didn't want to restore those i i think we're they talking about the ones this. i think That's we're talking two. about the ones on the east side uh facing the street is the the two windows I think Jen is talking about would be on the first floor. Are yeah, those that the, you would have any interest in restoration? No, because they're the six over six light pattern. And I'm trying I to see. go back to the 12 over 12, which I think is more in keeping with the, the age of the house. I agree. So I wasn't interested in, in restoring those. I Un understand. Um, one last question. Um, are there any other sure. windows upstairs that you think would fit downstairs that if you were thinking of doing a restoration upstairs uh, that you would consider bringing those sash downstairs. Again, I'm not trying to force an idea on you, but if you're mm. thinking of abandoning, uh, I mean, if you would think of trading windows with an eye towards standardizing saved wood windows on the front, we'd be curious to hear about it just because you stated an interest. On the other hand, if that's not really your interest, once you start changing out that you want the front to be uh, brand new as well, then we would want to know what your first choice is. Thank you. Sure. Uh, how many are we talking about that um, are beyond repair that would need new sashes, new wood sashes made, even if it was a different light pattern? So, um, the two kitchen windows are, they're pretty bad. I mean, I can bring my camera over. I don't know if it would do them justice. Um, I'm literally holding some of them together with tape right now. And I usually have them covered with curtains. I mean, I'll show you. Um, I'll flip it around. So I have it taped here um, and it's, it's broken, it's broken. Um, sometimes um, if it's not taped in well, this one will just fall right out. So this is taped in. Um, it's mostly a lot of broken panes. I don't know if you can see them. Um, I'm no expert. I mean, if someone can fix it, you know, I, I'm willing to talk to them. <laughs> um, Mr. Miglis is waving to you from his <laughs> <laughs> To get your full attention, he'd have to see him, but that's okay. <laughs> He's our resident window expert and uh, <laughs> has been mailed many out of very expensive projects with his recommendations. Really? Yes. True. I think that it's certainly worthy of uh, perhaps a, a little bit of uh, additional discussion 
Julie, do you have a time value issue that you have to have the approval today versus two weeks from now? It was just, it's getting cold and I'd love sure. to have windows that are just a little more insulated. Uh, but no, I, I can wait two weeks. Well, on the other hand as well, it's also a possibility that we could give you an approval and that you don't have to be married to that approval if you end up finding that you have another solution that you can use after you uh, explore reuse uh, a bit more if that ends up being a road you go down. So I just wanted to state two possibilities from this person's point of view. When we discuss at the public meeting, there'll be more. But again, we start from the premise that we really appreciate that you're interested in uh, making improvements uh, to the house, that you've been thoughtful about it, okay. and that you are even so willing as to be uh, uh, considerate to what is offered to you uh, in terms of people's input tonight. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. This is a learning process for me, and I'm enjoying this. The only thing Thank I wanted so to much. add. The only thing I wanted to add is that on the front facade, um, of course, we'd like you to retain that beautiful window. You weren't planning on doing anything with that, the attic window. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Not Great. for a while. Great. I mean, if anything, I might want to insulate it from the inside, but no, we're not touching that. Sure. Okay. That sounds great. All right. Thank you very much. Does anyone else have any questions? Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, thank you very much, Mrs. Castello. I appreciate thank it. Your, thank you for your time, bye. Thank you. We'll move on to application 5059-20 Avalon Place. Anyone for 20 Avalon Place here today? Sounds like someone's coming in on a spaceship. Okay, I'm gonna pass this one. We'll do the last one and see if they show the 20 Avalon shows up. Moving on to application 4060, application at 120 Hartford Avenue. Hey there, it's Mike Ferretto. How are you? Hi, Mike. Your um, address for the record, please? 120 Hartford Avenue. Okay, what do you want to do today? Uh, hopefully you have the documents in front of you. Uh, but basically looking to do the cedar shingles um, on the main structure of the house on all sides. How fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray. See what happens when you keep coming back enough? You eventually get to where everyone's really happy, or at least we are. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and we think be, you will be as well. Yeah, it's it going to look really, really good. It will look very nice. It'll, it'll hurt a little, but it'll look really nice. <laughs> it's going to be spectacular. Anybody else? Nope. nope. We should Lots of members of the public speaking in favor, but does anyone here uh, from the public in favor or against? Hearing none, thanks so much for coming back in. We appreciate it. Thank you. Returning to application 5059-20 Avalon. Anybody? Kim, did you get anything from anyone on that? I did not. I had emailed the applicant and never heard back. Um, about an email address that was not going through, but one did go through. So I'm, I never heard anything, but we do have a couple of phone numbers that I am not familiar with. They're not labeled, so I'm, I hesitate to unmute them if they're not wanting to be unmuted. Okay. So um, do you have, can I go back to um, application? 5054-2028 20, Belmont Street. I have a public comment. Yes, please do add that in. Michael Lewis sent in um, an e by email. Michael J. Lewis Sr., 24 Belmont Street states, I am the property owner to the east of number 28. And in as much as I don't have a large problem with a replacement garage, I will have a problem with anyone or anything entering or working on my property. 
I have encountered problems in the past, not so much with the Moretti's, but with other owners, and I would not like a reoccurrence. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the, uh, filling that in, Kim. Um, you might, I don't know if the homeowners are still here with us. I think they are. So they've heard, uh, I can't tell, hold on. We don't see that anymore, but she did state that she was moving two feet in toward her property, away from the property line. So. Be aware of it. You might want to share with that with them tomorrow. It of course is out of our purview in any event. So with that, um, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Make a motion. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 So returning to application 5049, the application for, oops, I'm going to read the wrong one again. Application 5051, 12 Avalon Place. May I have a motion? To make a motion to approve as submitted. I will second. Uh, we're familiar with this product. I think it's um, a, a nice substitute for a leaning garage. Um, this is not one of the garages that has the beautiful carriage doors that we're always looking to protect. Um, and I think it's, it's going to be a nice fit in that spot. Any other comments, commissioners? Nicely stated, Jen. Hearing none. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes for the approval. Application 5052, the application at 21 Chesterfield. May I have an, a motion, please? I'm going to move to table. I will second that motion. I um, would like to have the homeowners have their first choice if that's possible. And I think the best way for that to happen would be if we could have just a bit more time to uh, look at the comparison uh, between the posts that they saw at the neighbors that they like, and also that a bit of time be given to uh, identification of the existing windows and whether or not there's really a merit uh, or not uh, to uh, trying to use the same brand if they're available for the bay win uh, for the picture window. I, I agree, Doug, and if possible, I'd like a sample of one of the vinyl posts, even if they just take it out on approval and let us look at it. Um, I, it's hard to tell from pictures what the shininess is going to be. Um, and that would make a difference. I agree, Claire. Anyone else? All those in favor of tabling? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the application is tabled. Application 505340 Hart Street. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. I think pretty well possible. settled out on the application as to what they're putting in. This is pretty typical for, um, well, it's, it's a nice blend of two types of fences, the stockade on the back and then the picket on the sides, uh, keeping the view open. I think it's completely appropriate. Anyone else? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Application 5054, 28 Belmont. Make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. Again, it's a great product, um, more or less in the same spot where it is. Another leaning um, old garage without those uh, early characteristic doors that we like to save. I think that this is going to be a lovely substitution in that backyard. Agreed. I think what they didn't add, there's a tree growing through it. And that's what's knocking it over as well. <laughs> Darn it. Thank you, everyone. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes for 28 Belmont. Application 5055-37 State Street. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second for the sake of argument. Uh, I know these, we've gone 
three previous applications for windows here, I, I believe, and what I mentioned in the public meeting, uh, public hearing that it, it, Anderson came back with a pretty good uh, presentation on, on how they will install the window, which is always a, a, something we have with them in the past. I believe uh, with those two ornamental windows on Megat Park, uh, the plans for those are pretty cool because that's probably the most prominent view. And I think it's an appropriate replacement. Um, I would agree, Chris. I'm, I'm excited about them keeping those two uh, decorative windows. I agree. You know, I think that's important. So we'll have some of that detail there still. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was, as, as you said, one of the most thorough applications we've had from Anderson. So it was nice to see. Yeah, I agree, Mark. I, I like that they're keeping the, the decorative windows and are going with interior storms on those. Nice to have some of that original material uh, carried forward to the future. Yeah, agreed. I don't think I'm concerned at all. There was some discussion about the screens just because they're massive windows and they have no light divisions. And so I think for us from the outside view, um, you know, the screens are at their option. I, I would agree with you about that, except I still would rather they not be black if the windows are going to be white. I think that is a real detriment uh, to a full screen window. You're gonna um, put it on your tombstone. <laughs> so uh, I would say that uh, I would prefer a step that uh, says the will uh, the that the screens be silver or aluminum in color, uh, and uh, that they would need to come back uh, to us if they wanted to argue for black out of some sort of necessity. So somebody who's more familiar with this product, maybe that you can explain it to me. So they offer a fiberglass screen and then some fancy schmancy screen that they upcharge a huge amount of money for, but they, they don't also, offer straight aluminum? They also have, I think they also have straight aluminum available. Uh, Anderson usually has three colors. Uh, they have the true scene, which is silver. They have regular aluminum um, and they have uh, the uh, black nylon fiberglass. I don't want to speak for the uh, the dealer because he may know more than I do. But in my, it's my impression that Anderson uh, manufactures all three screens, even if they don't publicize that availability for the renewal line. And if you drive through town and look at um, full screens um, that are dark over a white window. It basically just looks like a dirty window. Actually, I think the 365 salesman, days a year. Yeah, I think the salesman made your point very well by showing the picture he did. He did. I agree. So Chris, I'd be willing to, yes, I, I can step a silver aluminum color. Is that what you, I, I don't want to, because 34 windows, whatever upcharge, as Vasek called it, a little more eloquently than me. I don't want to see that, but <laughs> Mark, pull back, I'll pull back mine and step. So sure. Mark, if you reduce, yeah, pull back your. I think I was. I think I was the second time. Oh, sorry, Jen. Okay, then, okay. then I will make a motion uh, to approve as submitted with the stipulation that an alternative screen option, either in silver or aluminum color, on the full screen, be chosen. Thank you. Thank you. I'll second that. I think we've discussed. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes with the stipulation for a silver or aluminum screen. Um, our, our district coordinator can speak to the applicant about um, an amendment if they want to go to the higher end screen um, or if that silver or aluminum screen is not available. Moving on, application, lost my spot now. Seven, number um, 5056, 415 Main Street. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. That's the Gove project? Yes, yeah. number seven. Um, yeah. I'll second. Yeah, again, I, I, again, I would like to have seen uh, glass in the garage doors, but it, it's a um, good project um, appropriate for the district and, and that uh, home. 
Well, for all intent and purposes, it's essentially a replacement of what's there already in a different material. Um, so it would be hard to uh, force their hand. The garage is very far set back. And so I don't think it has a lot of impact. Um, and my usual statement about oh, whatever window we're putting in a garage is not going to wag the dog and tell us what would be in the house if they were to change those windows. But I think that the things that they've proposed for the garage are perfectly suitable for the garage. Anyone else? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Application uh, 5057, 337 Hartford Avenue. So I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. Um, I think um, we said everything we needed to say, say you can't even see it. And I very much appreciate the people being so cautious and coming in, er erring on the side of uh, caution instead of moving forward with it without talking to anyone. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Application 5058341 Main Street. Make a motion to table. I'll Second. Oh, sorry, Jen. That's, uh, that's for you, Chris. You can take that one. Thank you. Um, Vasek, because I saw you raise your hand, I'm assuming <laughs> you're volunteering to have a conversation with Ms. Costello at some point. Would you be willing to do I, that? I would be more than happy to. That would be. Uh, I think if Kim could make the introductions, I'd be delighted to meet with Ms. Ms. Costello at, at her convenience. I will talk with the applicant. Okay. So, you know, give her my contact info and we'll set up a time. That's super. Thanks so much. I appreciate that a lot. And that. The only, the so only thing. The only thing I wanted to say is that there are a uh, few people worth waiting for in Weathersfield than uh, Vasek Miklas. So uh, I'm uh, sorry to delay uh, the Costello's project, but I think that uh, meeting Vasek and the benefit of his input here, along with the thoughtfulness that she's already brought to the project can only result in uh, something that we're more certain about when uh, the final approval is given. Thank you. I think we can make it worth your time. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Uh, all those in favor of tabling? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the, mo the application is tabled. Application 5059-20 Avalon. We're going to table that uh, because they did not appear today. Mm -hmm. May I have a motion to table? Oh, Jen, I'll table you. Do you have enough information just from the application to rule on it? or? I think we do. I mean, it's a fence. That's a it's good a, point. It's, it's a relatively simple fence. Lot plan is there. There's existing fence. I'll go either way, but I believe we do. If you want to take a look at it, it's at That's near the end. Right. Um, I'll entertain a motion. Anyone? I'll make a motion then to uh, approve as submitted. A second. Yeah, I think we've got all the photos. Yeah, it identifies. You've got the existing fence. Uh, you've got drawings of where it's proposed to go. You've got descriptions of what's going in. You've got photos of what's going in. Uh, yeah, I normally I would be not in favor of the. Um, the gate being so high, but it is at the back end of the house in the driveway, so um, I'm good with it. Anyone else have any comments? Well, all, those in, forward. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Application of 5060-120 Hartford Avenue. Approved as submitted. Second. <laughs> I'm so happy. I think the project is coming along fabulously. I think the um, roof is really going to make it a crown jewel in the district when they're done with this project. Did we stipulate the garage? No, I'm sorry. The garage is done. <laughs> then I, um, absolute, I absolutely agree with Jen. Um, 
the they are taking a, a, a property which could have gone in one direction um, um, and really uh, taking it to the next level. I, I think that um, we're all going to be pleased. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Um, we have got approval of minutes, or do we want to do the pre application meeting first? What's our order, Kim? Um, we need to go through approval of minutes first. Okay. Make a motion to approve. Uh, second. Second. Is there a second? Did somebody already do that? Yes. Thank you, Mark. With our usual thanks to Linda for her good work and to Kim, of course. Um, we had at that meeting, Mark, Chris, Doug, Claire. Um, so everyone can vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those are approved. Other business, public comments on general matters. We have one tonight. Um, we have a pre-application um, meeting and you all received a packet this afternoon um, for 121 Broad Street and I will hand it over to Sheila. Maybe. Hi. Broad and Doug. Um, you saw what we submitted today, it's, you know, decent sized project, but we want to get this started here and see what you guys think about what we submitted so far. I will jump in with, I will jump in with both feet to start. I can tell you, um, it looks like a great project. I am naturally concerned as I'm sure you were probably warned about a three car front facing garage on Broad Street Green. That's going to be the, for me, not speaking for all the commissioners, but that's going to be the hurdle for me. Um, I don't know if you have space or the design ability to either A, not have that, or maybe make a tandem garage that would suit your space purposes. I understand the desire to have the extra garage space. I redid a garage before I redid my kitchen. <laughs> my favorite antique car on site so um, and i'm telling you her kitchen needed to be redone <laughs> it needed however i understand that draw um but i i only speaking for me i really um a three car forward facing garage is a very modern look and although your house was built probably in the early 40s mm -hmm. um you know, it's not, it's not a, a look that's going to, I think, blend well on, on the green. Okay. Um, In fact, I, go, I'm sorry, please. No, go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I, I can think of very few places in the entire district where that would be appropriate. So yeah, it's, it's tough. Please go ahead. Right. No, no, I was going to say it is stepped back and there is plenty of space over there. Um, you know, I don't know precedents. I don't see them around except some detached three car garage. Um, I just don't know where the, um, yeah, explain the logic of it wouldn't be on a 1941 house or you don't like the look. I'm ju just trying to feel that out. It's a, it, it's a very, it is a, a very modern look. Um, you know, you, you would see it up on the other end of town on new houses. Um, and you're right, on older houses, you might see a bigger garage, but then it would be detached. You wouldn't have, it's going to make your house look very much not like a house of its own era, but like a newer house from the other side of town. Um, I, I don't know. Else? I, Jen, I, I think that, uh, I think that Jen is getting at uh, an important point there because, you know, on the one hand, I'm really intrigued by projects that take a house sometimes to a different level and bring us something in the district that we don't already have. Um, and I, I realize that the rambling nature of this home may lend itself uh, to the idea of uh, having it ramble in the other direction as well. But one of the problems is, is that um, 
even with the introduction of the forward facing gable over the existing two car garage, the actual house in the middle of it all remains fairly modest in size. And so the kind of uh, uh, construction that would support uh, a three car facing garage on the facade is kind of absent. In fact, uh, the addition of that uh, uh, gable, although it makes the existing two car garage attractive, it, it kind of seems like there's an awful lot going on there for a, a house that was originally only the size of the size that it has remained from the very beginning. Um, the first edition, for instance, that goes off towards Garden Street really coexists with the house pretty well because um, it uh, doesn't create a forward facing facade. Uh, it created a facade in a completely different direction that's um, behind landscaping quite often. In this particular case, a, a three car garage almost always has to have three lanes of asphalt or some other surface that brings you to it. And it's impossible to avoid that it's there. And so I realized that jockeying cars in a tandem uh, isn't as convenient as having the three doors. I would have to generally agree with the idea of um, using a tandem uh, and integrating that with your um, exercise room space um, or somehow reconfiguring it so that, um, because I really don't think that without changing the original building, which I think is not likely to pass muster here, mm -hmm. that it would work uh, for this house to have such a big garage on the left. Okay. Um, right, we'll move on. I just want to say we did look into tandem and we'll look again. It, there is quite a bit of space left to the left of the garage to the next neighbor's property line. And that would cut off all that if we did that. It just, you know, but we'll, we'll um, do some talking about that. I do understand your concerns. And also I think that the doctor's office, which it was, was built at the same time. I don't believe that was an addition. That's interesting then. Uh, if yeah. it is uh, original to the house, um, it still seemed to have been an attempt to try to not um, subtract from the residential nature of the home despite the business use. Right. I, mean, I start from the premise, like I said before, that this is a really interesting property on a corner. Yeah. And you folks have obviously thought about it much longer than I have. I just had a chance to look at this uh, upon my return home this evening. Right. And Sorry, I yeah. know that you have uh, a real attachment uh, to the neighborhood and respect for it. So the concerns that I think you're hearing here are not because there's any concern over a lack of that, because you wouldn't be coming to us in advance if, if that were the case. And I think that maybe uh, we're still at the stage where all our minds are open and that um, after this discussion and, and, and people have a chance to sleep on it, we may end up being able to embrace things that at least initially we are kind of letting you know we're having our sure. greatest concern about. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, for instance, the last thing I'll say about it is that I do like uh, the elements that kind of unify the house and try to have it face Broad Street or, or relate to Broad Street. Um, but, uh, and so, so my mind is still open to that. No, understood and taken. And um, yeah, we can um, move on to another part of the house if you want, anyone has any. Yeah. Uh, you know, the feedback. covered porch in the front's great. I think it smooths out kind of an awkward jot there. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, I know you, you've got both uh, several options about siding. Um, Hardy, in my opinion, Hardy board would make a substantial difference in the look of the house. Um, and probably from a performance perspective, perform better over the long term. Um, you've heard us, if you've listened to this conversation, you've heard us talk about products are no longer in existence. You, you just, you can't come back and match. And that's, that's hard. And Hardy Ward makes it much easier to do. So 
if you're looking at changes, if you're thinking to the future that way, um, that's another piece about Hardy Board. Well, we knew, um, you know, vinyl, uh, well, both of them were an option and the vinyl that um, Ron Drisdell, our builder, um, just came up with was a, a product line, part of the uh, Certainty family that um, is in particular made for restoration, it's Restoration Classics. So it's new to him. I've never heard of it, but I wouldn't have heard of it. I don't know, if, have any of you heard of that? Oh, we haven't seen it. We've seen okay. other Certainty products. Um, right. A lot of the individual shake look on other um, houses that have, have come out great. Um, we would want to see a, a sample of the product because the vinyl um, can be really good there are some good examples of vinyl, and then there's some really terrible vinyl. Um, so we would want definitely want to see it. I, I endorse the Hardy Plank too. Uh -huh. lines, it looks like wood and wears better than the vinyl does. So mm -hmm. um, okay, so we'll do some research into both the um, and find out what we can. Uh, just as another thing, at least marketed for the uh, Restoration Classic line of the uh, Certain Tea, it says it's. Um, there's a smooth and there's also a cedar finish. And uh, again, it's meant for this sort of house that's in a, a neighborhood like this or looking to you know, look original. And it also has like a low gloss finish on it is one of the features that they talk about. So, but we will- I, um, I, would, certainly be, I would certainly be interested in, in uh, being uh, given some more material about it and certainly give it uh, an open mind. I would say that the, kinds of things that you're talking about in terms of its finish are attractive. I think that the biggest issue with um, clapboard siding um, in, in vinyl is that it, um, unless it is uh, against the foam core that's shaped like uh, the back of, um, uh, uh, like a clapboard, uh, it almost always has a roll to it. So yeah. it, it is typically not as attractive. And on a house on the corner, you're in a difficult situation because um, you are constantly seeing different planes of the uh, vinyl and it's easier to spot it as a result of having so many different planes in, w in which to see it. Um, it was interesting on this old house this week, there was an example of a uh, new kind of siding that essentially is made out of glued uh, uh, composite pieces of, uh, of wood, uh, glued pieces of wood together. It looks like the back, of, like plywood really. Um, and supposedly it's more, it has stability and other features that make it attractive as a siding. I, I, I still tend to think that you can't beat cedar on a house. Uh, it is, uh, uh, a multiple hundred year siding uh, when cared for well. Um, and uh, on the other hand, like I said, we're always looking for products that replicate the look of the ex of, 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 real, of real wood. And uh, this is a great time for us to have documentation about anything you'd want us to consider. All right, we will uh, request that. Oh, go ahead. Sheila, one quick thing too. When you look at the Hardy board, if you get a textured versus a smooth surface, we've discussed this before, it does tend to hold dirt. And, and as oh, opposed, texture. yeah, the yeah. texture. So you may want to consider to that as well. And Chris, you know, we've read so much about Hardy board. Are you seeing any of the chipping occurring in old Weathersfield? So that's all over the web that these pieces have been chipping at times and they've been struggling getting them replaced. I'm just kind of curious what your history has been there. Anybody Some of the other commissioners picked that. We did have a home on Church Street that was deadly against Hardy, Hardy Board. He thought the seams and right the, fail, the failures that are widely reported out there as well too. I, I know there's a lot in the district that have not reported. Well, uh, there's, there's two right on the Broad Street Green that you can look at. Right next One door. is is Silas Robbins bed and breakfast, <laughs> and the other is 150 Broad Street across the street from it. That's a greenhouse with a, a front porch that goes all the way across from it, and uh, it's on the. Um, uh, it's in both cases, uh, the siding has been on those houses for a long period of time, and I've never seen uh, any 
need for a siding repair on either home. Right. So you could uh, ask the uh, homeowners themselves um, and they might be willing to let you know, but uh, those are uh, two houses right on the green that have uh, cementitious fiberboard, which is I think the generic name for mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the hardy plank. Excellent, thank okay. you. And just real quick about the cedar, uh, is that something that would use and then like put um, maybe Azac corn, Azac in the corner, or is that? Yeah, your trim boards. Uh, yeah, that that is out trim there as well. Could be that, yeah. So that's yeah. And that is that is certainly an option as well uh, for people who are really fans of using uh, mixed materials. Um, I'm not saying that. Uh, in, in my in in my opinion, there's a a lot to to be said for using wood exclusively, but if the choice to not use it um, is, is strong enough, as long as what you're providing in the alternative uh, looks like wood, um, you know, we'll certainly be o open to it. Um, it's just so that- The house problem. you mentioned, the bed and breakfast, that is a siding on the corners with a hardy plank. Is that accurate? We'll go, there. When we'll you go just... Chris and walk it. We'll go look at it. I think that I think that it is. And Most of the soft fits be, and the trim. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I tend to have more of an all or nothing view, yeah. which is to say, if you're going to go wood on all the siding, you might right. as well go wood on the trim. We don't know about miter corners or if you're going to use corner boards. Yeah. And what right. are you going to do? I need Ron to help me there, Chris. <laughs> I'm now out of my league. Okay. Uh, if oh, yes. I can address this a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, please bear with me. Let's go back to the garage thing. Uh, several people mentioned the addition off to the side and the garage. And I think what stands out with me with the house as it stands now is you have a relatively prominent large center structure, which is the house, and it has two wings. On one side, you have a garage. On the other side, you have the doctor's office. Both are subservient to the main house. I think with the proposed gable being relatively tall and as tall as a full second story, it sort of diminishes the main house and gives more prominence to the garage as it's drawn. Mm -hmm. uh, I would concur with some of the other commissioners about how the third garage bay would look sort of out of keeping for a house of that of its period. Um, however, looking at your plot plan, looking at the uh, sort of angled drawings with little cubes on it of the massing of the property as it is, I'm just wondering, and actually looking at the property, it pretty much looks like a house and a garage to the left, a doctor's office to the right as a freestanding building connected by a small breezeway. Right. What if that house on the right, the small doctor's office, happened to have a one-car garage to its side? I don't know how that would work with, with having a contiguous three-bay garage. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, like Jen, built a huge garage. It's smaller than the house, but just barely before I redid the kitchen. Uh, so, you know, we, we but certainly uh, putting a small one car garage to the right, it would involve a curb cut for you from Garden Street, but it would change the massing of on the property on the left of the garage. And it would sort of change the massing of that doctor's office, but not necessarily in a bad way. So that's my thought about massing in general on the property. Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we'll look at that, see if the space is there. Now, just, I don't yeah. know what setbacks are gonna be. Right. And you know, with setbacks on a corner property, it's kind of weird because, you know, is it your backyard or is it your side yard at that point? I don't know right. how the building department looks at it. Right. Uh, Hardy Plank. If you wanna talk Hardy Plank, I own a house outside of the district uh, an 18th century house, which I redid 15 years ago. Yeah, 15 years ago. Uh, I left the front wood. The three other sides went with hardy plank. I don't see any chipping there. 
uh, the guy who put it up is a bozo. It was the first time he ever did it, and I'm not going to do it again, but not because of the product, but because I'm at a point in life now, I'm not going to be doing that kind of project again. But it has held up well. Uh, my only bit of advice on that is don't paint your house green. It fades in five years. <laughs> uh, no. It'll be white. White is good. White. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, um, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Vasek. Yeah, I think those are the biggies. Uh, garage doors are minor things that can be ironed out. But again, something that works well with a 1940s house is great. Uh, you know, the upside to it is by 1940, they had sectional overhead doors. So just about anything you put in there, as long as it's not overly ornate, because the house isn't overly ornate. Uh, it chooses a few prime points to make statements, like the, uh, the little bays that stick out. Those are important to the design of the house, but they're not overly frilly. I think they work very well. Uh, your proposal to put copper on there will be a very nice touch, especially after it turns brown. Uh, I just put a copper roof on my side porch. It looked gaudy for the first year. I'm happy with it now. Such a New Englander <laughs> body. <laughs> yeah, with a name like like mine, I'm a New Englander. <laughs> uh, I also have the hardy plank on my four car double tandem garage, and I think it's been about thirteen or fourteen years now, and we're not having any problems with it at all. And uh, we put it up as amateurs also. And it's holding the color too, Jennifer. It's white, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. So you have, have you had to paint it? No, not since then. No, we had some issues um, around one window, but it had to do with our installation of the window because it was a semi self home job. Um, you know, more to do with the window, but otherwise it's holding up really well. What about, okay, I'm sorry. I, the only thing I was going to say since Vatsik uh, just mentioned it is that um, I mean, our house is uh, two and a half stories next to a ranch. It's not like you can't have a more prominent house next to you, the ranch that's next to you. On the other hand, the massing there is such that, that that ranch is still kind of a really interesting house on its own. We don't have that many on the green. And so whatever you would be doing on in that direction, I realize that you don't wanna have wasted space uh, at, on the other hand, how it relates to what's next door does have a certain um, impact. Uh, and I think that's part of the other concern um, that uh, is stated here. Understood. I'm glad to you hear know, that the white hardy plank isn't yellowing though, Jen, in, if no, they're considering it. People say? That it yellows? What? No, no, I mean, he's glad yours no, isn't. I'm glad it's not. Yeah. No, it's not yeah. at all. No. That's so great. we want to be aware of the time for you guys that we don't want to keep you too long. Yeah. So. But Mr. It's, Ellen, a, it's, say it's a great project. Thank you for bringing yeah. it to us. Thank you. No. For yeah, I have it. to say, I love it. Looks, no, it looks like fun. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's my I, project. I really, I, really I like, like it. The, yeah, <laughs> I really like the penetration across the back compared to what's there now. Uh, that's really a place where you can bring the house uh, into uh, a more modern, uh, more contemporary look, even while mm -hmm. keeping it traditional uh, mm -hmm. versus the kind of 1960s, 70s sliders that are, are there mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. It's going to look beautiful. Yeah, we very much appreciate it. Yeah coming in and talking to us informally first to, to share some ideas. It always I, think, I think Mr. Elliott had a question though, or a comment. Yeah. You know, Chris, I was going to ask about, you Why know, I thought it was Chris that asked. I know, about that. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. He has <laughs> more hair. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> the, the porch in the corner. So somebody commented, we are trying to, you know, pull that corner together a little bit. And we're excited because we like the people that walk by. We like the activity of the green in front of us and trying to figure out a way to be a little bit a part of that, but also fit inside the character of the house itself. So uh, we're excited about that piece. It's not, you know, it's obviously not an enclosed area, but it's an important part because we love porches and we know there are porches all over town. Who's gonna right. take up smoking then? Cause Frank used to smoke. 
<laughs> I know he did. I know. <laughs> afternoon uh, cocktail there. Yeah, we um, had thought first about adding a front porch on the house. I just thought you could do that until I talked to Charles with the building department and found out, no, we couldn't because we were uh, too close to the sidewalk and the only place we could put it was between the two and it seems to fit perfect there to kind of join them together. So we're hoping that that can work out. Um, yeah, that's and, a, and a great choice. You've, you've got it nice and deep. Um, I have a great side porch, but it's very narrow. It's, mm -hmm. it's original. And so you can't, I can't get chairs looking at each other. I can't have conversations. Mm -hmm. You've got it deep enough mm -hmm. that it's really going to be useful. Yes. Thank you. What's actually replacing, um, if when you see it on, do you see it on one of the, or maybe you see it on the plot plan, well, this, not the plot plan, but there's actually a little fence there and here, and, um, and there's a little patio there already. It's just lifting it up and putting a roof over the same existing you know uh patio there so yeah that, that was a picket fence that so you, the yes. covered roof will come out to that picket fence and there was a flagstone Pretty patio no, yep. yeah yeah i think it might be a little bit shorter because where the utilities come are there connected to yep. the house yeah yeah uh anything else right now windows or we haven't looked into doors or garage doors or I'm not oh I, I, as you look into the as you look into your siding um, we've talked about if you if you're interested in pursuing this vinyl, we've talked about seeing samples. It'll also be really helpful for us to have examples of installations, so you can actually see pictures of what it looks like installed, not just the actual piece itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so, your contractor can probably get that for you. Yeah. Okay. So if I can address a little bit of that, I think one of the reasons that Hardy Plank tends to get the nod from us as opposed to vinyl is hardy plank is installed the way wood is mm -hmm. and one of the things that you'll notice is if you look at a house that's sided in wood is that a clapboard always ends up at the bottom of the window and at the top of the window it's not notched it just fits there and then they simply adjust the clapboards in between to fit the width of the wind the mm -hmm. height of the window you can't do that with vinyl Vinyl is four inches and four inches and four inches, and that's all it is. Mm -hmm. You can't make it four and a sixteenth or three and fifteen sixteenths to adjust that little bit. Uh, there are ways to finagle it. You simply make the trim at the top of the window a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller and the same at the bottom. But most people will never think of doing that and they'll just notch it. And that's one of those sort of dead giveaways hello i'm a vinyl house mm -hmm. you know we tried to mm -hmm. fake it we didn't quite succeed <laughs> <laughs> but with the hardy plank you can do it okay thank you thanks so much for your time folks we appreciate it very much thank you any suggestions you. going forward what we should do next get what? an application in get All the right. application <laughs> in and, and have some of these and what you require like cut um what do they call cut sheets, cut sheets. of things? And, no, yeah. Kim can take you through all that. Okay. okay. I have okay. just one more thought uh, uh -huh. that I'm uh, interested in hearing from the commissioners on, as well as the homeowners, although not necessarily now. Um, it's just that when I look at the uh, fireplace that's in the back of the doctor's office, mm -hmm. um, I think that if it's going to be that way, I'd like to see it. Uh, plan to be sheltered by uh, greenery of some kind. Um, I kind of think that uh, it might be a neat place for uh, a brick chimney. Um, and we had a previous commissioner here who loved the chimneys. Uh, and I'm not saying that there's a, I have a real strong feeling about that. I'd have to, I don't even know if it's my thought for this or not, but I kind of think of the back of the web house and how there's a, a brick wall along the back of that addition. The idea of having real brick there as opposed to this uh, very common, what you see today uh, for a um, modern fireplace, that bump out is, is kind of from a very different era than the rest of the building. Uh, I'm not saying it couldn't coexist. It could if you, I think, shroud it a little bit with plantings and there is another house uh, at the corner of uh, Chesterfield and um, Broad that has that on the back of its kitchen addition. Um, but like I said, this is gonna have a little bit different view 
I don't know if you'll really see it or not, um, um, but Doug, if you were, it's just a thought. Doug, mm -hmm. it's going to be hidden yep. in the garage. So don't worry about it. Oh. <laughs> well, in any case, we'll save that for another day. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, we'll Doug. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome to the neighborhood. Uh, we are so lucky to have folks that are so interested in that home uh, and interested and, and willing to interact with uh, the neighbors that might be walking by it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all. Good we night. look forward to it. Thank you. Good night. Do we have any other mem uh, public comments, Kim, for tonight? We do not. And anything on your report for tonight? No report. Correspondence? None. Having all of that through, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, y'all. Good job. Good Thank you. Good night. Good job, Bob. Good night, Claire. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs>